everybody, it's Tim with Collect Jurassic, and I'm back with another exciting Mattel Jurassic World toy review. We're looking at some of the newest figures that just got released. If you've been following our channel, you've been seeing all the Primal Attack figures coming out this year, and uh, we've kind of reviewed them as they've come out. But today we're taking a look at some of the newest stuff, which is the Attack Pack, Ramparicus, Minmi, and the Soundstrike Edmontosaurus, which I'm very, very excited about that one. But we'll get to that in a second. But here they are for your viewing pleasure um, in their packaging. We're going to go ahead and actually unbox each of these one by one and go over it and do some comparisons. So, um, you know, without further ado let's go ahead and get started and we're going to start here with the attack pack Ramparicus. so here it is in the packaging um I, I say it every video and i won't stop saying it i love the new packaging design this year i love the colors i, I love it all and uh Ramphoricus obviously looks great in the package as well. If you go ahead and flip it around, you can see it has the same card back printed for basically um, all the figures in this wave. But what's interesting about this card back is that you can see that in addition to Minmi and Ramphoricus in this wave, you're going to see reissues of Calavasaurus and Ornithalestes, which is great because those are both of the new attack pack figures that came out in the previous wave. So no repacks in this wave. It'll be all new figures, um, which is nice for those of us trying to track down just the new stuff and not any of the reissues. But these two are actually both repaints, Ramfricus and Minmi, but they're new this year and that they have new colorways. So without further ado, let's go ahead and rip this one open. What's nice about attack packs this year compared to Dino Rivals last year is that there's no uh, collector card to worry about. It's literally um, just the figure in here. So go ahead and get rid of this garbage here. And there is Ramphoricus. Uh, this figure obviously um, you know, has a little bit of articulation, which we'll go over in a second. But again, this is not the first version of this figure. So we'll go ahead and talk about the paint job first um, for Primal Attack, which is a lot more dull and natural, which I really like, especially when you compare it to the um, previous version of the figure, which I have right here. Um, as you can see, it's much brighter, almost a little bit cartoony in a way, whereas in, uh, in this case, the, the new figure, to me anyway, feels a little bit more of like a realistic animal. But, um, you know, it's got the same sort of, uh, I guess, major paint application beats as the first figure and that the wings are a different plastic than the main body. Uh, and then the, the jaw, the bottom jaw is also a different color matching the wings. So um, some sort of... Uh, similarities there but other than that the paint job it looks like the pattern's even the same but the paint job on this new one is again something that i really enjoy but uh articulation wise uh, this is actually a pretty impressive figure because you have the ball joints on the wings that allow you to you know flap the wings up or flap them down or do it at different stages they also roll too um and then you have the legs themselves, which are just on one rotation. They are they rotate together so you can kind of put them in a landing sort of pose or put them behind them. And then last but not least, the head has a lot of articulation. Of course, the jaw is going to open up and down, which is always nice. Um, but also there's some rotation in the ball joint of the neck so you can kind of make it look different ways. Look up, look down. Um, I really appreciate that in a pterodactyl uh, or like a pteranodon flying reptile figure. The fact that it can sort of look down um, or kind of look up. Usually they just have sort of a static neck, with no articulation. So very appreciated here on Amp Ramparicus. And what I like about the articulation too is you can kind of, just kind of do sort of a landed walking pose with this particular figure so kind of cool and this new version looks really nice too um with the paint job so I, I i would say this one's sort of an upgrade versus the dino rivals one so if you missed out on that one uh, this one's definitely uh superior in my opinion uh just for the paint application alone oh one other little detail i like to point out here is on the tail there's a little bit of uh, feathering going on that's painted. So nice little detail for those of us looking for more feathers in our figures. Um, there's a little bit of feathers in there already. So that's Ramphoricus. Um, not brand new, but a repainted figure. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get to the next attack pack figure, which is the Minmi. Again, uh, this one is a repaint as well. But uh, again, I think this one's going to be a little bit more of an improvement. So there's the packaging, as you can see, but uh, I already went over the packaging with the Ramparicus, so it's basically the same. I'm just going to go ahead and open this one up and get right to the good stuff, right to the figure itself. Um, 
go ahead and get rid of that packaging and get Minmi itself out. So there is the Minmi figure. Um, again, reissue. So let's go ahead and just bring that other figure in real quick and talk about the paint job before we talk about the details themselves. This is the previous released Minmi. This actually is... Um, from the Fallen Kingdom figures. So if you're technically that's, this is 2020, those were um, 2018 figures. So um, almost two years ago that this figure came out, um, we haven't seen a repaint since. So this new one, as you can see, same with Ramp a little more dull. I've heard it called the lava version because of uh, the coloration. But um, you know, I think in this, this case, I like both paint applications equally. They kind of almost look like a mated pair or something. Um, just because of the similarities here and they don't feel so, um, you know, contrasted with each other. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about the actual figure itself. That's the, that's the comparison with the previously released version, but Minmi here, um, the new version. What I like about this figure is that all of the uh, armor on the back is actually separate molded plastic. So it's not painted. It's not going to rub paint. It's like somehow they put plastic inside the figure and then put another shell around it. So kind of a cool paint application on the tail and on the neck and head. Those horns are actually painted. Um, and uh, the beak itself is unpainted, but you can see the eyes there. And then as far as articulation goes, this thing has uh, articulated tail. They can kind of just go back and forth. Uh, a lot of the figures have that articulation that's just sort of a rotation on the body. So I don't know if it really adds a lot of articulation in this case, or sorry, posability in this case. It kind of just looks weird with the horns pointed on the side like that. But um, the neck, obviously, has got a ball joint on it like a lot of these figures. So you can kind of do some interesting poses with that. Uh, it kind of goes up, it kind of goes down. It's more of a side to side rotated thing that it does uh, better on that joint. And then the legs themselves, of course, are all articulated. So you can do running, running poses or have it lay down. Um, so those standard leg joints are pretty much expected that the extra stuff is the ball joint on the neck um, and then the tail for what it's worth. But yeah, a nice uh, new version of Minmi, only the second one we've gotten. Same with Ramphoricus, only the second version of that figure we've gotten. So not one of those figures that's been repainted to death. Um, so uh, it's nice to get new versions of those and not just get kind of the same old Raptors and Dimorphodons and stuff like that. So um, Minmi, new figure, new old figure, repainted, but, uh, you know, sort of fresh because it hasn't come out a lot. So those are the attack pack figures just came out. That's the new stuff. But let's go ahead and get to the main event in this review. I'm sure a lot of you are waiting is for the Sound Strike Edmontosaurus. So let's go ahead and get this thing in front of the camera here. Um, this is the Edmontosaurus, another herbivore joining the ranks of the Mattel Jurassic World Dinosaur lineup. Always exciting to get an a uh, herbivore here. Looks great in the package, obviously. You can already see the exotic colors of this figure. Uh, in the back, we have a um, the standard render of the figure doing its action. You know, sometimes these renders look completely different from the figure, but this one actually looks spot on. So uh, no false advertising here. And also you can see Cryolophosaurus and Triceratops in the bottom here. Um, they must come maybe mixed in with this wave once this wave hits stores. Uh, but going back to the front of the figure, yeah, here it is. Uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore in the package. So why don't we go ahead and get it out and start playing with it. My knife here. I've got a couple really easy cuts to do just here and here. And Edmontosaurus is free. Easy unboxing. Go ahead and get a look at her. Um, wow, this is cool. This is a very, like, solidly built figure, too. Um... So as you can see, she's got uh, some very like muted, um, sort of an interesting pattern on the back and sides of the figure of the body. The tail's all one color. The front legs are all one color. The back legs are different color than the front legs. They actually painted the toenails too, which we hear about th that feedback a lot on Mattel figures, not painting the fingernails. So there they are, fingernail, toenails, whatever you want to call them. They are painted on the hind legs of this figure. But what's really cool, what really pops about this figure is the head itself um, with this colorful crest and this um, sort of variation in the face. It just looks really, really nice. And um, I think they did a great job. I actually think this is based off of the Jurassic World Evolution video game version of Edmontosaurus. So not a total 
totally, uh, you know, original design from the Minds of Mattel, but certainly uh, the mold is, and they definitely picked a paint scheme that um, was already super successful in that video game. So um, I kind of think they did the right thing without, you know, going off and making something all new. They took something that was really working and really unique to Jurassic already and brought it to life in toy form. So um, paint job looks great, I think. I think this one's probably going to be a little bit controversial for some because it is a little different, um, but I like it. And of course, the articulation, um, we'll, go, we'll go over the action features here in a second, but the articulation, um, the front legs have rotation um, and they also have a hinge, so they almost have full range of movement. So you can kind of do some different um, poses with that too. Um, you know, maybe you can have it leaning down to take a drink or something like that, uh, or or maybe like it's punching a, a, a raptor attacking it. I don't know, but you can do some stuff with the, the front legs and the back legs as well are on a... Um, it's kind of like a, I wouldn't call it's kind of a ball joint. It has a front and back and side to side rotation. So again, you can do some more like uh, combat poses, like maybe it's bracing for impact or something. Um, so nice articulation there. And then the, the um, head itself is on a joint. So you can kind of make it go down, go all the way up, kind of be somewhere in between and it can kind of rotate, you know, around like that too. So, oh. So, you heard a little bit of the roaring. Let's go ahead and talk about Soundstrike. Soundstrike, as in a lot of these figures this year, it's sort of a uh, full body motion action, which uh, looks great in pretty much all the toys and in Montasaurus. It hopefully isn't going to be the exception. So, yeah, it's gonna be loud, but move the tail. You can go up and down. So, does that up, down, rotate, left, right. So it has that full range. It's, um, it's all controlled by the tail. Looks really nice, of course. Um, on all the figures, Soundstrike just always looks really cool. I think what Mattel did with the action feature this year is just so much more immersive than just some biting jaws or some slashing claws. Like I really like how the, the whole body moves and, and the sounds are a little obnoxious sometimes, but the movement of course just looks really nice. So um, here it is on display in the Montasaurus. Yeah, comparison wise, uh, you know, let's go ahead and compare it to another similarly sized herbivore from Mattel, and that's the Parasaurolophus. These figures are basically um, uh, really similar. Obviously, the molds are totally different. Not one piece of one figure is the same as the other, but they have the same sort of length overall, which isn't surprising because they have the same price point. They kind of have the same um, like heftiness overall, I'd say they both feel equally heavy. Maybe in Montasaurus is a little, tiny bit heavier because of the electronics inside. But, uh, you know, overall, it just feels like if you want to know how big this thing is and you have a Parasaurolophus, it's literally identical to that. So not, not many other comparisons to make there. Just the size of the figure itself, I think, is important to convey. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I can say about Amontosaurus itself. Just another great herbivore to add to the Mattel Jurassic World dinosaur lineup. Um, I, you know, getting a herd of these certainly isn't the most um, ridiculous thing I've heard. I, I have a couple of Parasaurol offices myself, so I can see why some collectors might want to grab a few of these just to have a herd of them to do some cool photography or just have a cool shelf display. Um, I can see why people would want to do that. Oh, I just noticed the front fingernails are painted as well. So, right? I can't tell. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I think they are painted. So uh, again, some nice detail there. So uh, yeah, that's Edmontosaurus and the new attack pack figures, Min Me and Ramphoricus. Uh, Got to say, I'm happy with these colors. I think the repaints are an improvement on what we already had released. And of course, having an all new Edmontosaurus uh, is really nice too. All new figures are always appreciated, and it's nice when it's not just, you know, some generic carnivore or something. So I uh, appreciate a newer herbivore always. So, yeah, that about does it for today's review. Uh, again, these are all new figures from uh, Primal Attack line, Mattel's Jurassic World 2020 toy line. Um, uh, these were from Target, and Montasaurus was from Amazon. Uh, they are going kind of in and out of stock on all the websites, but... By the time you watch this review, I'm sure if you hunt hard enough, you can find them. Um, but yeah, that's my review. So thanks for joining me. And again, come back to Collect Jurassic for more toy reviews when the next sort of wave of figures gets released. Thanks for watching.